many refugees are not necessarily Christians. Um, in fact, most of them probably aren't uh, Christians. And it's seeing that, that spirituality, this, irrespective of what the faith tradition of a person is. And that came through very c clearly recently at a consultation we had in Asia. We had Christians of a range of denominations. We also had Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus. And when we reflected on the notion of the, res the church of the stranger or responding to the stranger, every one of them, no matter what culture or what social class they belonged to or what faith they were, they all said it's central to our spirituality to welcome the stranger. Um, and it's been part of our history and one of our challenges in the world today. Today, faith groups work together for the broadest definition of just who is the stranger they must welcome. After the outpouring of response to the boat people, some Canadians began to question their capacity to be generous towards newcomers. But for many religious leaders, their work to assist refugees had only just begun. As you know, in 1995, the World Council of Churches um, adopted 1997 as the ecumenical year for the churches in solidarity with uprooted peoples. What does this mean for us in terms of uh, Canada's history and the churches of Canada uh, and their role with refugees and welcoming refugees and working on um, issues affecting displaced people? The reason so that, that the that faith groups work more closely together than they had done in, in the past is because as institutions, religious institutions, as faith groups, we no longer have the power, prestige, and status we once had, which I think is the best thing that could ever happen to us. Um, therefore, we need to reach out to people of like mind who are faith committed and work together for something we believe in. It's all about being in community in a way, and we have to see where our community is. I believe it's far too easy for people, in other words, to recognize the needs of those we see and to ignore the needs of those we never see. And one project that strikes me of extraordinary value, certainly in keeping with the traditional mandate of the churches, would be, I think, to begin really challenging the complacency of the Canadian community about just why... Racism it is, is always just that far beneath the surface of, of any society and especially a society that is suffering economic times, bad economic times. We're looking for scapegoats, we're looking for people to blame for the things that are affecting us. And uh, it is very easy to blame uh, the newcomer, the new Canadian, the refugee, the immigrant. As people of faith throughout the world, but particularly in Canada where we're so well off, we need to in the name of Jesus become a new community and in the name of faith demonstrate what it is to love our neighbors and to give our lives for the well-being of neighbors. The Somali community are a Muslim community and though sometimes it's difficult to make a very defined line between culture and religion, I may say in our culture which is actually partly our religion, uh, we grew up in the belief that if you don't help others, you cannot be helped. Uh, the uh, commandment, the mitzvah of welcoming the stranger is mentioned more often in the Torah than any other of the mitzvot of the commandments more often than respecting your parents, more often than uh, keeping the Sabbath day holy. So on a numerical basis, uh, people have felt compelled to say that, well, uh, it must be pretty important to the religion of uh, the Jews to welcome the stranger. 
I, I feel at home. <laughs> my my faith group, uh, you know, uh, teaches me that uh, being a good Sikh or attempting to to uh, to be a good Sikh is is uh, uh, it means being a good Christian, being a good Jew, being a good Hindu, and vice versa. And I feel perfectly at home amongst uh, members of different uh, faith groups. The worst thing we do is define others as totally other than ourselves. Uh, it's one thing to recognize differences. It's another thing to say those others are to be treated differently than me. Those other people ought to be excluded from the society uh, uh, of equality. Those other ought to even be exterminated, which is the end role of that kind of logic. Now, my philosophical says that's where evil goes. Good goes in the other direction, which is the recognition of differences, the respect for differences, and the valuing of differences while maintaining your own beliefs and working together with people of various kinds.